Well, as the campaign trail then really heats up, let's take a look, shall we, at what the candidates body language is telling us just now. Delighted to say joining me is Dr Harry Witchell, Senior Lecturer at the Brighton and Sussex Medical School and body language expert. Good morning to you, Dr Witchell. Good morning, Lisa. Good to have you on the line. Let's take the candidates then, shall we, one by one. Seems a bit sensible. Let's start with Liz Truss because she has, fair to say, certainly faced, uh, well, lots of comment over her appearance, the way she speaks and fair or unfair her interview style and delivery, uh, despite being a seasoned politician. Yes, Lisa, politicians want to look like a leader, but they also want to appear authentic. In my opinion, Liz Truss's body language does look and sound a little bit forced. Liz Truss has made very similar body language changes to what Margaret Thatcher did, but I don't think it works so well. Plainly, both Thatcher and Truss lowered their tone of voice and made their body language more statesmanlike between when they entered politics and when they were campaigning for leadership at the higher levels. I think Liz Truss now moves quite slowly uh, and in a more deliberate way compared to her earlier speeches. Gosh, it's interesting, isn't it? Actually, I was looking at some uh, YouTube clips of Liz Truss in, in times gone by, and certainly her voice, you're so right, was much more high-pitched. Uh, say then, Dr. Witchell, you were advising her just now. You know, that both candidates, of course, have got some key TV debates looming. They've got all the hustings with the grassroots Tory members, and that, that's set to go through the summer. What would you perhaps say to make sure her appearances don't look forced? Because, because that, I think, fair to say, brings up trust issues as well. Absolutely. I think the most important thing about looking honest and authentic is that you have a suitable mixture of different emotions. Liz Truss has an unfortunate problem in that her lack of smiling often looks like she's trying not to look too happy. She's trying to look like she's very serious. And yet she has a little tiny smile that often appears at the end of her speeches when she thinks she's landed a really good point. And that, that is not what you want. At the, when you're talking about happy things, you want to look happy. When you talk serious things, you want to look serious. But you don't want to look like at the end of a serious point, hey, I'm really proud of the fact that I made a good point. So good for me. Those tiny little smiles of hers do look a little forced. Let's talk Rishi Sunak now then, because fair to say that as a former Chancellor, well used to being in the public eye, he's had to deliver all those budgets, hasn't he, of course, at the dispatch box regularly. I mean, he perhaps has less to worry about when it comes to uh, wanting to make a good impression at public appearances or not? I agree with you. I think Rishi Sunak has altered his body language a little bit, but not so much that it's ruined who he really is. A lot of the real person of Rishi Sunak really comes through in his speeches, particularly in his brief moments of enthusiasm. His voice is a lot more variable, a lot less robotic than Liz Truss's voice, and he comes across with his body language matching what he says rather than being painted on, and that sort of thing will look more trustworthy. Do you think it's fair, Dr. Witchell, that our leaders are subject to such intense scrutiny? Uh, I'm not talking about policy here. I'm talking about, you know, their voices over how, how they move, their demeanour and so on, uh, rather than um, all the focus being on what they would do for us if they get the keys to number 10? Yes, Lisa, I do think it's not fair at a personal level, but you can see why political advisors can be worried about body language, because sometimes the margins that really decide an election can be very close. And what politicians really want to avoid are any deal breakers where a voter or a small number of voters may see something in a politician that makes the voter vote against them. Those deal breakers can sometimes be illogical, like sexism. And it only takes a small t number of voters. If these voters have sexist expectations that a leader should be masculine, that could be enough to swing an election in some cases. Which brings us on to two words. Uh, Boris Johnson, just to end with, Dr. Witchell, because for many people, when they voted for him, they often said, didn't they? I mean, we call them vox pops. When we spoke to people at that time, the last general election, they said things like they liked his hair. They liked his cheery demeanour. Indeed. So Boris Johnson is a, a very interesting character. He doesn't really have anything leadership-like about him, but he was, many people said, that he makes me laugh. Boris Johnson is very entertaining, and we have been through a period where people were looking for entertaining politicians. But I think Boris Johnson has come as, has received his comeuppance recently, and he hasn't looked very leadership-like. 
And that has cost him, I think. But I, I'm an American, of course, and it's very difficult for me to say it. But sometimes there is a class system in Britain, and that can influence the way things people see things. Oh, well, uh, obviously, I know you're an American, Dr. Witchell. Shall we, shall we end end with that point then, the difference between what uh, voters in the U.S. saw in Trump versus now Biden? Yes. So um, obviously there was a very close election in 2016 where uh, essentially Hillary Clinton lost an election by less than 0.1 of a percent of the voters. So and that could potentially we'll never know, but it could potentially have been influenced by sexism. So when we talk, look at Biden versus Trump, Biden had a traditional trustworthy, ordinary guy sort of feel. And I think that the people that they view as Trump's base, which are, say, working class and traditional laboring men, that that base also could vote for Joe Biden. And that was quite important, I think, for Biden, because it gave him that little extra push to get him over the election threshold. Really good to catch up with you this morning, Dr. Witchell. Thank you. Really interesting. Dr. Harry Witchell there, senior lecturer at the Brighton and Sussex Medical School and a body language expert.